I'm just going to put this um, in the drop off of these lists on here for my mom and I'm going to use the rest. Just like the one. Because I don't want it to waste. It's way too long to make. Would anyone like me to put right. this in the uh, is it You should have put some peanut butter in the bones. Put in the freezer. I'll put some peanut butter in the bones now. Okay. Mitt, so I'll start off. Shh. I'm on. Oh. Okay. Admit all. There we go. Hello, everybody. How are you guys all doing? All right, I'm just getting everybody on. Hey, uh, hey, Sonny. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Perfect. Terrific. I'm just admitting everybody one, uh, trying to get everybody on here. All right, so invite mute. Okay, everybody is muted except for you right now, sir. And I'm now trying to find Sifu in here somewhere. <laughs> there he is. I gotta ask him to unmute himself. Is this your mic? Okay. There we go. There you go, Sifu, you're on. Okay, I'm just trying to, I'm gonna put it gallery wise so that's why i see everybody all at once kind of thing all right uh everybody seems to be getting on there still waiting we're getting more people joining in all right how's everybody doing give me a thumbs up if you guys can all hear me okay and some of you i can't see you so great so how are you doing it if you guys can maybe uh even turn on your video that would be terrific because i love seeing the faces behind the names and then at the same time i'm sure it's very very important that you know seeing your facial reaction from all the uh great knowledge and gold nuggets that these two legends are going to be giving out and if you guys do have any questions you guys can either a type it in into the uh into the chat box or raise your hand wave it flag it so i can see you and then what i can do is in between i can kind of uh ask them Alex, you seem to have a question right now, so let's get you unmuted for me for a second. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Alex. You got a question, or are you just saying hi to everybody? Well, no, first I of just all, want hey. to make sure that, uh, uh, that uh, you guys know that I'm there. So uh, I hear everything. Okay. Good sound quality. I'm ready. And I hey, believe great. we are recording, too, as well. Uh, we got more people joining in. I've got... Steve, I've got Gina. Let's give it about at least another uh, couple of minutes, guys. Let's start up in about two well, minutes in to make sure. Uh, yeah. In the meantime, in the meantime. let's get a uh, let's get Sifu well and to to start talking a little bit. Sifu, can you talk a little bit? Yeah, man. Don't, don't <laughs> you get me started? I won't be able to stop. Um, don't worry, I'll getting, stop you, Sifu. Right. I will, <laughs> I was getting so jazzed up just uh, just knowing that you know I get an opportunity to uh, to interview uh, the Black Dragon. I mean, he lives right here in Hawaii. We only live a couple of miles away, but you know, every time I see him, I get so inspired. We talk about so many things, and he's told me about so many different projects. I can hardly keep up with him. I mean, when I think I can keep into a foot race with him, no way. <laughs> By the time I I catch up to him, he's gone. And I really admire the way that. You know, this is a very, very humble person. Um, you know, as long as he's been in the martial arts, I've never seen him going out and bragging and talking about things that, that is beyond him. He's, he's very level-headed, a lot of humility, and I tell you, total respect for this man and a lot of good uh, uh, integrity. You know, so guys, when, you, when, when we ask questions here, to him, you know, I know that he's going to shoot right from the hip on it because uh, he's the type of guy. And... Um, uh, you know, 
we can all learn from from uh, from anyone, you know, and especially from people like like him, where he went from bottom up to the top, and he, he he's still growing. Everybody's still growing. I mean, I mean, at his age, you know, I'm both of us are in the same age. He practices. I mean, when I call up, he says, "Oh, wait a minute, though. You know, I got to get back from my gym." Okay, what is he doing? He's doing his 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 uh, 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 Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and just doing all that and it's incredible his body shape for a person that's in that shape so i have a lot of questions to ask about it about it you know because um uh, we try to catch up but he's so healthy he's a he's a anyway Whew. well i'm turning it back over to sunny where are you sunny i'm right here sifu i was just getting messages on my messenger to send the link to more people uh mm -hmm. so that's why i I uh, blanked myself out there for, for a second. But if anything, if anybody else joins in, that's okay. They can still join in at the same time we're recording everything. So, uh, you know, you guys, if you want uh, the recording on this, we'll put this on the Dacascos Martial Art uh, website, okay? So if you do have any uh, questions, I mean, like I I'm said- gonna Either message I'm going to shoot the, I'm going to shoot the first question. I'm going to sure. shoot the first question. Okay. Uh, you know, I read Ron's book and I've been keeping up with him and it's almost like, where do you begin? Because he's got a life as a martial arts, as a police officer, you know, and as a Marine and someone that was lynched, you know, um, not too many people go around hanging by the neck and survive. But, you know, so I have so many questions about, 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 you know, his tenacity to, to just step up and just keep going. So one of it I'm going to ask, Ron, is because I know that a lot of people want to know, you know, um, why and how, you know, did you start in the martial arts? You know, I started training in Brooklyn with Moses Powell in the 1950s as a teenager. I was uh, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. I met little John Davis and I met Grandmaster Moses Powell and Professor V. And I started studying with him at the St. John's Community Center in Brooklyn. You know, at the same time, I trained with Ronald Duncan because they wow. all had the same class in this one community center. Awesome, awesome. That was my and, um, you know, because um, at that young age, you know, I guess they must have been the most influential persons in your life. Now, how did your parents play into this? Well, my father thought martial arts was useless, but my mother <laughs> okay. wanted me to do something, um, something different and something that I wanted to do. You know, I fell in love with, with watching uh, Moses Powell do his martial arts and he was like my Black Panther, Superman, Batman, all that rolled in one. Mm -hmm. So how could you not become enamored by someone so great? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I, I was kind of confused on some things though, but um, now that I know, you know that, um, and you enlisted into the, the military at what age and I, why? I was 17 and uh, I wanted to join Marine Corps from when I was about 12 years old. I'm a product of the Sands of Iwo Jima, John Wayne movies. <laughs> I wanted to be a Marine more than anything in the world. I trained about five years in fitness and different things in order to get myself ready for boot camp. It didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and I, I think now, you know, during the time that you were in boot camp, yeah, I think, where was it? it, it South Carolina. Yeah, and um, you got into a problem there where you got lynched. You know, that's an I, interesting I story. How did it happen? Kingston, North Carolina, for not riding on the back of a bus, you know, oh. in the back of the bus. Uh, the police picked me up. They took me to uh, a cell, and then they let me out later on. Walking to the bus station, I was jumped by about 20 or 30 uh, pharma type uh, racist and uh, 
they broke my jaw, they knocked out 10 teeth, they ruptured my oh. eardrum, they broke my left arm, they broke six ribs on one side, four on the other side. I spent four months in a hospital. It took 10 years before I was able to close my button on my shirt or wear a tie. Whoa. Um, wow. Um, that's pretty heavy crap that happens to any, anyone, you know, and um, what was- North Carolina was not that uh, liberal in those days. Even on the base, they had white only signs in the bathroom, the water faucets. Imagine on the base. Mm -hmm. This was a big mind blower to me, Al, because I was delusional to say the least in that I thought that um, being a Marine was going to make me uh, as good as anyone else and be accepted as a real American, patriot, all that stuff. And that was fantasy thinking. Wow. It was, but, it was um, a real mind blower. I, I I, I know that you, uh, you know, you've got still that military back, background, you know, and, um, and uh, you know, because you, you, when you start something, you really, you really stay at it and don't, uh, don't, don't stop and just continue. But, you know, I know that thing could have been really traumatic to you. Um, is that still affecting you in your life or have you overcome that or what? Well, I have um, had PTSD. Uh -huh. More so from the hanging uh, incident than being in Vietnam and my brother uh -huh. being killed in action in 1966 um, when I came home from the Marine Corps. But uh -huh. I was really a very uh, naive young man. My only interests were martial arts, drawing, fitness. You know, I, I had no idea of the real world. Going to Paris Island, South Carolina in 1960 was a real eye opener to the world for me. Mm -hmm. Wow. So with the martial arts and the Marines, you know, background, you know, um, how do you feel this has helped you? Well, I believe that if it were not for the martial arts mindset and my being in really good shape, I would have died when I was hung and beaten. Um, I can only believe that uh, a supreme power and my ability to never quit. You know, when, when you're close to death, you, you, you know, they knocked out my teeth. They, I was really messed up. And psychologically, I was more I messed up because I didn't think being in the Marine Corps was going to be like that for me. I mm. thought we were all Do you Marine recall how long you were? Six years. Do you recall how? No, no. Do you recall how long you were hanging? Um, I got hit in the face with a, with a shovel once they pulled me up in the air and I was choking. Mm. So I don't know. I wound up waking up in a hospital. Somebody pulled you down. I woke up in Kingston hospital in North Carolina. And they didn't wow. even want to um, to help me. They said, just let that nigga die. I mean, things were really different in the 60s. You yes. know, yeah. they were really different. And, and when I went through boot camp, there were only four people in my company of 60 guys. Four oh. black people, you know, 46 white people mostly from Georgia, um, Kentucky, uh, Arkansas, you know, these real Southern guys that had old thinking. You know? Right, that old mentality. That right. old mentality. It was quite mm. a challenge, but you know, I, I don't hold any animosity towards anyone in regard to any of that, because what happens in life happens, there's no cause. There, there are simply events that happen in life that you were part of that at that point in time, this is what happened. Hmm. And you, you can't change that. I couldn't make myself white. I, there's nothing <laughs> that, that could have changed that, you know? But I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I was not broken so badly uh, that I was not able to start to rebuild my life. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
And if it weren't for martial arts, I could have never done that. I could have. You never. did a lot. I'm sorry. You did a lot of competition because I've, yeah, I've seen you. For 55 years in over nine years. You're still years. doing it. And, and still I'm still doing competing it. in Jiu Jitsu at 77. Right. Hmm. No. And we're the same you age, know. right, huh? Well, you tell me it already. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> that, that, that's on. That's our secret. <laughs> okay. But anyway, listen. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask, say, you know, because they've watched, you know, uh, the Black Dragon, and I'm sure that a lot of them would want to know how did you get the name, the Black Dragon. Actually, Bruce Lee gave me that name in the 1960s, 67, 68, somewhere in there. I was at the uh, All American Tournament in mm -hmm. Madison Square Garden in New York City. And mm -hmm. I had lost the grand championship fight to a guy named Joe Hayes, a really, I know him. really great martial artist, a great, right. one of the greats. Mm -hmm. He beat me, but Bruce was sitting uh, ringside. He mm -hmm. said, after that, he took a picture with Joe and I, he said, you're the black dragon. And you know, I laughed and whatnot, and I never thought about it again. Uh -huh. Ten years later, I made a film, The Black Dragon. But thanks, Bruce. You just never know what's going to happen in his life. So he, I, I he named you. A very interesting person in that we yeah. we discuss philosophy and psychology and martial arts technology. Good guy. Very so creative. he was the one responsible for you calling yourself The Black Dragon then. Yes. And if it wasn't for him, I would have never started doing martial arts films. He was my inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been an inspiration to a lot of people, and I'm sure glad that, you know, um, he got you up there. But, um, you know, being being now called the Black Dragon and done, how many films have you done so far now? Well, I did 10 Black Dragon films, but I've worked in uh -huh. over 300 films in the past 60 years. Mm -hmm. I joined and, the screen and you're still doing. in 19, 1965. My first job, I was mm -hmm. working on Kojak. I was a taxi oh, driver on okay. Kojak with Telly Savalas and his brother, George. I worked on Ryan's uh -huh. Hope for four years as a bartender at the Crystal Palace. So I did a lot of work, a, a lot of TV work. I was on Oz for four years. I was a prisoner on that show for four years. Um, most of my um, martial arts experience really came from the East Coast Stuntman's Association. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a student and he was the vice president of the East Coast Stuntman's Association. His name was Harry Matson, And I was the first martial artist that they brought into that stunt organization to choreograph martial arts for films. So I did a lot mm -hmm. of film stuff for TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I noticed that that's really awesome because I can, I, we can stay on that subject all. I know that you, um, um, was going or in process of heading out towards Atlanta to work on another another film. Uh, are you allowed to talk about it? Yes, I'm, I'm getting ready to do a film with Michael Jai White and Taima, the star of The Last Dragon. This mm -hmm. film is called Make a Difference. It's actually Boys in the Hood with Martial Arts. Wow. What the, but the wonderful part about it, the character that I'm playing is Moses Powell, who's the teacher Whoa. to Taima and Michael Jai White in the movie. Mm, so it's mm. like a really, it's it's a really special uh, movie for me, you know. It's really special. So Mo Moses is something else because I I remember when I was uh, traveling on on the, um, the the Midwest and in uh, the East Coast, you know, I was involved in doing a couple of uh, uh, demonstrations with him, and I always liked the way he did his one finger roll. Yes. I mean, it was <laughs> awesome to watch. You see, That's, uh, but rest in peace for him. He's really a good man. Um, you know, in the martial arts, um, you know, what is primarily your expression or your fighting style? I know that you call it uh, Shin Du Shen, right? Um, well, could you repeat that again? I'm sorry. Okay. okay. What do you What do you call your the expression or the martial arts that you're you're teaching or expressing? It's it's Chinese Goju. It's the Chinese okay. Goju okay. system, and it's composed. Mm -hmm. It's it's an eclectic system. Um, starting with the basics of Goju and incorporating many different forms of Wing Chun. You know, I studied Wing Chun for over 25 years. 
with the, uh -huh. I started with Duncan Leung in the 60s. And then I went off to Hong Kong. I lived there for almost 10 years. And I studied with uh, Leon Ting, um, uh -huh. Bing Chun, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm presently working on um, Jiu Jitsu, the Brazilian version. I've been studying with uh, Helsing Gracie for the past nine years. Uh -huh. You know, I was three years as a white belt, five years as a blue belt, and I made purple belt last year. So this is nine years, two months, purple belt. And the purple belt- You're a real, is you're really an excellent, ex yes, I'm sorry, go ahead. And, and I enjoy belt. competing in and out. You know, uh -huh. I, Al came to see me compete a couple of times in jujitsu and when I was just starting out and it's, it, thank you, Al, really thank you for the support. Jujitsu competition, I find fascinating because at 78 years old, I don't want to get punched and kicked anymore. I don't, I don't want any, that stuff. My body can't take it. I have bad eyes. You know, my limbs can't take that stuff. So I decided after fighting Hoist Gracie at UFC 4, when I was 51 years old, he was 26 at the time. I decided mm -hmm. after that, that I would spend at least 25 years developing my ground game. And that's what I started mm -hmm. to do. My goal is to make black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu under Helsing Gracie, and I will. I mean, I'm at purple belt, which is a little past half. Give me another six years, seven years, I'll do it. I'll be there for your graduation. <laughs> I'm gonna compete for the next two years though. Great, fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. I, I really enjoy the competition. All right. I've never so, you know what I, anybody near my age. Everybody in the dojo was in their 20s and 30s. You know? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, your son, you know, you were talking to me about it. Your son is also in, involved somehow in your career, right? As far as uh, screenwriting and maybe my even son martial is, arts. He's a poet. Mm -hmm. He um, has the Poetry Lounge in West Hollywood. He's had it for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, he works for Russell Simmons. And he's just presently produced a uh, mini series about uh, Chuck Berry, five Whoa. episodes. Mm -hmm. And on the, uh, it'll be like on the biography channel, that kind of thing. But we're working on something now where he's going to help me put together a five segment mini series, My Life Story. You know, I, I just finished my, my documentary, The Hangman, and we finally got a distributor. And you know how hard it is to get a distributor. We finally uh -huh. got one. And so my film will be released to the public, you know, in another month or so, uh -huh. which is so uh -huh. great. I mean, it took three years to put together. I put my heart and soul in it. Uh, you know, you've seen me. I know, I know. Crazy for the past few years trying to get it done but uh -huh. uh, finally that's done my animated film the tower of the black dragon which is the artwork behind me it's a 90 minute uh anime movie which is going to be out in april uh -huh. and it will see uh -huh. global distribution the same Fantastic. company that i've worked with we've just finished doing the tower of the black dragon video game which Epic is going to pick up. So it's it's a really big, it's like martial, uh, Mortal Kombat, but with me uh -huh. as one of the characters. It's wow. so cool. I mean, never you know, think at my age that this kind of stuff would happen, you know? Uh -huh. and, and I spoke with Fred Williamson the other day and Robert Parham, they're gonna reboot Three the Hard Way and they want me to take the Jim Kelly part. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How crazy, right? You are truly blessed. Really, um, all the things that you have and you've you learned. You've been very actually, influential to me, Al. You have motivated oh. me so much, you don't know it. <laughs> really. I don't know. I just sometimes I feel like I'm running around chasing my tail, you know. I've so I look up to you also, you know. For at least 50 um, years, I've watched yeah. you and analyzed you, Malia, you, your son. What a wonderful family, man. Well, that's what it is, you know, family. And then naturally comes our extended family. And you know that in Hawaii, we call it Ohana. Uh -huh. And you're part of the family. You are part, part of, of the Ohana family too, for sure. Right, sure. So, you know, there's, um, um, 
I'm sure, Sonny, on your end, is there anybody wanting to ask some questions? Well, I'm going through the uh, chat line right now. People are just saying, so far, so good. It's incredible. Sonny, you're in Vegas? Through What was that? Are you in Vegas? I wish I was in Vegas. <laughs> are you in Hawaii? I wish I was in Hawaii. I'm in Where are you? Central Canada, up in the really? cold weather. Oh, yes, sir. It's what made me think you were here in Oahu? Holy oh, cow. Man. Maybe because I look Hawaiian or something. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He's, he's, he's in Winnipeg, Canada. Winter. Alec, Canada. where are you at? Hmm? Where's Alec at? Alex. Alex, Alex is calling from um, Spain, Spain, somewhere in Spain. Oh, yeah. you're in Spain? He's in Spain. Yeah. How about you, Bobby? Where are you from? Oh, you got to unmute yourself. Let's, uh, let's, what I want well, everybody to do is just say hello to, to both our uh, legend hey, Alex. gentlemen. And then this way, and tell them where you're from. Because I'd like to know where you guys are all from, too, as well. So let's work down the line, OK? So Bobby, where are you from? Tennessee, East Coast. Okay, terrific. <laughs> so right. mute, once you say something, just mute yourself. And then next we've got, uh, I'm working uh, right next. Uh, who is this? Sorry. Steve, where are you from? Where are you at? Uh, I'm in, uh, well, currently I'm in Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City. Okay, we got another Canadian on the line. Thomas, where are you at now? Uh, yeah, so I used to be in Winnipeg with uh, Major Sunny, but I'm now in uh, Montreal, which is uh, further east in Canada. Terrific. Mike, where are you from? I am from Gillette, Wyoming. Terrific. Casper, Wyoming, originally. Oh. In fact, I had, uh, I had lunch with uh, Ron at the UFC in Casper. Uh, back in 1995. Wow. Wow, you got a good memory. Oh, my goodness. I never forget a man like you. Oh. <laughs> well said, well said. Claude, where are you That's from? That's when I was working as the commissioner of the UFC. That's correct. Yeah. Mm. Small world, that's for sure. It is a small world. It, it is, it really is, especially with technology nowadays, right? I know, I know. It's, it's crazy. crazy. I didn't oh, have yeah. a cell phone back then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next we got Claude. Where are you from? Uh, Claude Lawson, I'm up here in D.C. Um, I'm just honored to be on here with uh, two of my uh, childhood heroes I've met. Super oh. a few times, but I never got a chance to meet the Black Dragon. And hearing that three the hard way is coming out, I got to text my father right now. He's gonna lose his mind. <laughs> well, you should invite him to join in. Actually, there. I, you know what? I'll do. I'll do just that. There you go. Tell him to join in, and he can start listening in and getting some gold nuggets, and also hearing the the great story. You know, it's so inspiring. I'm on it. All right, terrific. Oh, man, I saw somebody fucking. All right, next we've got uh, AJ. Where are you from? You can unmute yourself, please. Hi, uh, just recently relocated from Los Angeles to Northern California, Calaveras County. So uh, up in the mountains, about two hours outside the Bay Area. But the last four years, I was actually in LA training at House of Champions with uh, two guys in here, Tiger and Sifu. What's up, guys? <laughs> right. yeah, so uh just honored to be here thank you very much uh unfortunately last year i'm usually a dragon fest attendee but i missed meeting you last year uh oh yeah yeah because uh i was up fighting a tournament in seattle with sugarfoot my coach so oh uh, wow yeah it was the one year we didn't go and Please set up get beat my best yes i will most definitely i i usually talk to him on the weekend so i'll send you best thank you so you escaped Los Angeles and yes. all the problems that's going on with the COVID. So you went up into the mountain to isolate. Pretty um, much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm calling it my uh, Masoyama moment. I'm just up here in the mountains training every day. So uh, can't complain. Yeah. Good, good shot. Good shot. All right. Yes. And then, and you well. 
All right, mm -hmm. next we've got, uh, I guess, Tiger, or is it? Sorry, <laughs> I, I'm trying to read the names on uh, on this, so it's like I can only. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of jumped on this last minute thanks to AJ. I was uh, training with him a bit uh, once and in martial arts stuff out here. Uh, actually, uh, Sifu Al, and I actually got to meet you uh, about a year or two ago, I think, at the showdown in Manila. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, in the Philippines. Uh, the red carpet interviews and stuff. And oh, you, yeah, you know, with Don Wilson, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> Cynthia Rothrock, and of course, uh, Mark, you guys gave me some awesome interviews. And uh, Mr. Ron Cleave, I have to say, growing up, uh, I live in Los Angeles now. That's where I met AJ, and he's the one who wrangled me. I was supposed to be training yeah. right now. I skipped it to come listen <laughs> to you guys. Uh, as a kid, uh, you were a big, big part. And the reason why. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Right when I was getting into like Kung Fu and martial arts, there was a mm -hmm. day where I went to Blockbuster. So it kind of dates me a little bit. Mm -hmm. and my buddy and I were going to go get like, I think we're going to watch like, I don't know, uh, Toy Story 2 again or something. Mm -hmm. But a friend of mine was like, you got to watch this movie. It's the Black Dragon. Oh. The guy at the counter, when he gave us Black Dragon, he's like, all right, I'm going to give you UFC 1 as well, and you're going to watch it tonight. And it blew my mind. And from that day on, I, I've been hooked. So it's really great to be able to see you guys and, and talk. Thank you guys. Thank you. Me. All right, terrific. Next, we have Kevin. Greetings, everyone. <laughs> hey. Can you, can you hear me? What's up? Yes, we all. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, good to see everybody. Uh, always fantastic to see uh, Sifu Al. Uh, got a chance to spend uh, about 18 years with Sifu and uh, uh, incredible, incredible uh, martial artist and instructor. Great man. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, glad to see you. Um, uh, glad to hear your interview, Mr. Van Cleef. I've kind of followed a little bit of career of your career, not a ton, but I've seen uh, seen you fight, and uh, I think I saw you in a couple of movies, and uh, I was blown away. Oh no! <laughs> so, so we have two legends in the house. We can't live our pants <laughs> down, huh? <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I uh, uh, Sunny Sunny uh, gave me a shout, and uh, I got the info. I was having some trouble hearing the. Um, I was in the other room with my laptop, so I had to move over toward the modem, and now I can see you guys real clearly. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. It's All right. Always great to see Sunny. And, ahead, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, so great to see everyone. Thank you for, for the invite. Terrific. Okay, next we got Paul. Unmute yourself for me, Paul, please. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me? I've got a headset going on because I was I was getting ready for uh, my classes this evening. You guys see my Zoom set up behind me. So yeah, yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> never gonna miss a, a chance uh, like this. So I rushed through all my cleaning and then I'm sitting here now focused. So but yeah, no, amazing stories. I uh, I wanna I wanna make everybody listen to the, to the beginning of this. I was just such an eye opener for some people. You know, it's a great yeah. stuff. Uh, I don't want to keep keep you guys looking at me. Let's get back to you guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Caesar, you're next. Yeah, I'm from Los Angeles, from House of Champions. Um, I grew up uh, reading about those guys, Al DeCascus, C4L, mm -hmm. and um, Master Ron Van Cliff. I got I got magazines and books of you guys when I was growing oh, up. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um and I'm so honored to be under uh, C4L, ranked under C4L, but um, I, I trained with um, Benny the Jet, Sugarfoot Cunningham, as well as Cecil Peoples. Oh, B. Yeah, yeah, B. Yes, yeah. and Cecil, Sensei Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to see you guys here, two legends. Thank you. Hey, thank you for joining us. And then there is uh, on top, uh, hello? Yes, hi. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I'm originally from New York and Miami, but I've been living in uh, Berkeley for 40 years. And I teach martial arts psychology. And I've always wanted to meet the Black Dragon. Oh, I've no. About you. And no, listening to your story is amazing. I mean, I really never thought about, I, you know, when you were talking about 
that you thought entering the Marines that would change everything? That's quite a shocker. And uh, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it really kind of rivets me. I guess in your place, I'm thinking, you know, this is one place where all Marines, and how can this happen? But uh, that's just amazing. Thank you for sharing. I, I thought nigga was my name. <laughs> uh, uh, that's right. Well, really, that, that's truly amazing. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, I've read about it, but you know, I couldn't connect to it. I mean, but this is just shocking because I thought it happened outside of the Marines or it was a separate thing. But well, how can it happen when you're a Marine? In my uniform, oh. in my duffel bag. That's shocking. That really is. Wow. Thank you for sharing. Terrific. Well, we have a few other people uh, online, but I don't see their pictures, so I'm not going to even ask. So we're going to get back onto the interview, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand it back to uh, Sifu Al, who's going to ask another question, and then we can get another answer. And then, again, if any of you guys have any questions, either raise your hand oh, up please. or put yeah. it on the chat line and so that I can ask. Uh, Alex, you have a question? Um, no, I just wanted to um, thank uh, Grandmaster Alakaskos uh, and of course the Black Dragon for this interview. Um, you know, I was born in communist East Germany mm -hmm. and uh, in Poland, we got all the movies uh, in the black market, meaning it was not legal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was not legal to watch any of the films, and I was able to witness some of the uh, appearances of the Black Dragon. And I just wanted to say oh. thank you, sure. thank you for being an inspiration uh, because of people like you uh, mm -hmm. or Grandmaster of the Cascos. I was able to come to the United mm -hmm. States to be uh, to have a new start, a new life because oh, you inspired wonderful. millions of millions of people. Thank you for that. My pleasure. Thank you, Alex. Um, wow, that's pretty heavy. Um, yeah. And um, I know being on the screen, you know, you multiply that a thousand times by just your performance and the way that you behave. And outside of that, you know, knowing you personally, I mean, it just compounds it up to a million times. I'm so grateful to, to and honored to be in your presence and really oh, good circle wow. of influence. And, no, I'm seriously, I'm, you know, this is, this is really, you know, I mean, <laughs> when Eric uh, told me that you were in Hawaii and we hooked up uh, several years ago, I said, man, I was so delighted. I said, wow, wow, can you imagine that, man? Here we are, two guys over here in Damn, paradise. I've been here nine years now. Yeah, can I've been you, here can nine you years. That? Wow, wow, yeah. So, so much things are happening. But then you tell me that you probably be moving. <laughs> yes. Right? Okay. Um, you know, I, I love Hawaii. I came here with my ex-wife so she could do her PhD at UH because they mm -hmm. didn't have the program at UVI. And so I really love it here, but I can get the same existence, beachfront, mm -hmm. really warm water, the same tropical climate for half of the price in St. Thomas. You sold me. <laughs> I, I lived there 10 years before I moved here. And I mm -hmm. owned three condominiums in Sapphire Beach. It's beautiful there. I can be in the water in less than six minutes from my door. You're talking about Key West? No, St. Thomas, the Virgin Islands. Oh, St. Thomas. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And I'm moving back That's to the end of this year. Incredible. So we still have a lot of time. Well, not much, but we really got to cram in the time before you even leave. Yeah. We got to make a um, movie now. We have to make a movie together. Well, that's coming. That's already that's already in plan. You know, we've got things. And you know, you inspired me when we were talking about my book Legacy. That instead of just making one, we could make it into. Um, you know, nobody likes to go and watch a six-hour-long movie, but if you make it into episodes, of course they'll watch. Yeah. Exactly. So, that's so, why my son is putting together a five episode episodic of my life story. Absolutely. And, I and think it's, that works. I, they call it a mini series, limited series. There we go. 
I'm, I'm sure that's going to work out good. And I'm, I'm glad that you're helping me and collaborating to, to, to get me onto that. You know, sure, I got my son, but I'm, you know, he can do a lot of things. But I mean, um, he's not, he's not in our generation. You know, I know. and uh, we see things. We, we have see a lot of work to do, Al. Our oh. window of opportunity is closing, and so we have to take advantage of that and really be the best we can be. Totally. Absolutely. You know, um, if you were to give advice to a person that's that's um, actually getting his life started, has okay. come up maybe in, in a, hey, there you go, the young one. <laughs> well, he's not young anymore. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah. Well, and he looks like a young man that's going to go up in the right direction. Man, and I'm sure you're doing already, that. Now, and taller yeah, than me. Incredible. <laughs> wow, incredible. Well, anyway, you know, you got somebody that you well, actually you got, you know, your your other son and this one, and and you know, they're ending up to be good people. Um, but you know, they were your sons. Now, how would you uh say that you met up with a maybe a boy of 16, 17 years old and trying to find direction? What kind of what kind of lead would you give them a uh, 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 direction? You know, I'm actually going through that now with my son because he's, he's, he's confused in regards of what he really wants to do with his life. I think that martial arts should be a part of everyone's life. I think it should be in the public schools, the elementary schools, the high schools, and it should be mandatory, just like this Ed was. Mm -hmm. It's because martial arts is the best people builder I can think of. It builds Earth character. Building. Right. And that's what's missing in today's society. We're living on the low end of culture and things now. We're living in a, in a very chaotic um, society. The only organization that I know is martial arts. You know, it's really interesting because um, I know that, you know, you know, I have my program uh, for my master class and my teaching. Uh, martial arts, but I also know something too, and I don't know if you 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 run into this, you know, especially when it comes into the court of law, and we know that whenever you're facing an attorney and a judge out there, the minute you start saying that you take martial arts, they think of military art, that and now you on, yeah, and and yeah, it, it runs against you, the disadvantage. So, I recommend when people get into any kind of problem, I say self-protection or self-defense and try to stay away from the, the word martial arts because let me tell you the truth. Um, in the court system I found here in Hawaii, there have been so many people who are involved with the martial arts as MMA, Krav Maga, or things this way. And when they end up in court and when the attorney starts jumping on them and they find out that's martial arts, it goes against them. But the it minute they say, no, no, no. Yeah, no, and they say, oh, no, no, man, I was just trying to defend myself and, you know, uh, uh, limit, limit the problem from happening. I was just doing, doing self-protection. Then it goes the other way, and now they're in their court. Do you find this true? Oh, of course. Of course. Okay. Could you, if you had to explain this, how would you explain it to somebody, uh, you know, as far as martial arts versus uh, uh, self-protection? You know, I started training martial arts, not for self-defense or anything. Uh -huh. I was a gymnast and I wanted uh -huh. to find some way of using my muscles and body in a way that would be more than just posing like for bodybuilding. Uh -huh. you know, I started uh -huh. out as a bodybuilder, I went to gymnastics and then I went to martial arts. So I found that the combination of three gave me a really good uh, physical awareness but I needed more mental temperance and the control that I developed in martial arts through learning technique and being abused by, by my teachers and things like that really helped to <laughs> um, uh -huh. subdue those, those negative thoughts that I had as a teenager. You know, you, you do stuff as a kid uh -huh. that you don't even think about. But once you start martial arts, you think about everything you do not just in the dojo, but outside. Fantastic. Yeah. Do you think that martial arts today, um, some of some of the, the schools now, I don't know, you know, they are teaching too much on 
uh, uh, offensive techniques or things this way. And do you think that, you know, it should be more character building so that, you know, you can have more respect and all and such? Well, you know, martial arts has those three components, the mental, the physical, and the spiritual aspects. Most schools don't teach those three aspects. And it, it, it's important to have the right mental attitude for training you know, the, the ability to, to, to be a student um, without ego, without, uh, you know, over 50 years in the martial arts, I take off my, my black belt and I put a white belt on. Uh -huh. So many people said, Van Cleef has lost his mind. No, <laughs> you have to empty the cup to fill it up again. Absolutely. I knew after UFC four, when I fought Hoist Gracie, that I was, deficient in my ground game, uh -huh. which most stand-up martial artists are, but are too uh, bravado and too arrogant to admit it. Yep. Everybody uh -huh. needs a ground game. And it's not just because every fight goes to the ground, because some don't. But if it does go to the ground and you have some ground technique, some training, you stand a better chance of surviving that incident. That's right. That's right. Well, uh, Sonny, you got anybody else that have questions before I start asking? Uh, right now, no, everybody's actually just absorbing it in. Oh, looks like Bobby's got a question. All right, Bobby, unmute yourself for a second and ask your question. Can you hear me? Yep. I was just wondering, uh, like I said before on y'all's lives, uh, I'm a baby <laughs> and a martial artist, you know, martial arts. So what's the best advice you could give somebody like me at 40 starting out? What would you I started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at 67 years old. <laughs> there was no, I was older than my teacher. There was nobody in the dojo and there's hundreds of guys in Helsin school. Nobody was above 40. Nobody. And the average student is in their 20s. Uh -huh. So I've had a white belt three years, blue belt five years, and I made purple belt about a year ago. So it, it's, it's work. I mean, if you're not willing to go in and sweat, which is really what jujitsu is about, going in and making that mental, physical epic for that good Tommy chess game, which is what it comes out to. It's a, it's a wonderful art. And, and I see that it has enhanced my complete overview of what martial arts was because truly I was deficient in that area. You know, I have to admit that because it's a truism. You know, first thing you learn, you learn yourself first. Well that's not working for me, this is gonna work for me. And you make a conscious decision and here I am nine years later and I'm gonna make black belt in jujitsu eventually. I might be 90, <laughs> but I don't care. What am I gonna do anyway? You have to do something to keep active. Everybody, you know, it doesn't matter what martial arts you teach, what reason you teach or, or train. It's the constant variable of going to the dojo or training center as often as you can and putting out a hundred percent when you get there. That's what really makes the difference in life. You know, yeah. life is a series of good stuff and bad stuff, lots of bad stuff. You have to be strong enough mindset wise to overcome whatever obstacle that is in front of you and keep going. You have to. Mm. Yeah. I'd like to add to that. Yeah. Um, I'd like to add to that because, you know, I see this. Yeah. And Bobby, you asked, you asked a lot of questions and it's all legitimate questions. That's really great. The other thing too, is just that, you know, groundwork is very important because when you, the day you were born, you were on your back and the day you die, you're <laughs> going to be on your back. Okay. So half your life, you're on your back. So therefore you learn to how to survive. You know, I've always told people that the minute you come out you in second. birth, you, you already have your fist closed and you are already KI and yelling, ah, mama, hey, with me. And then when you die, 
your spirit is gone and your hands are open up and you've gone and passed on to another place. Now, that said, that is really important that um, you take a look in all parts of the martial arts, learning everything. Now, for me, I use three components in, in, in uh, working with, with what I, I do. I, I make sure that there are three things that is really heavy for me. It is ground, standing, and weapons, you know, um, because then you cover everything. Because one thing, I am a striker by heart, but I surely don't want to go to the ground. And when I first started my martial arts, I started in judo and jujitsu mm -hmm. because it teaches you the very basics. In other words, yes. you know, it teaches you how to fall, how to prevent yourself from falling and everything that way. Because, you know, a guy going to shove you, you're going to go down right to the ground. I mean, if you can't kick and punch, you're standing up, you're going to go down so that you learn how to do that. And when you feel comfortable, you can do that, then that's fine. A lot of people will go that when they work in different ranges, inside range, standing up range, weapon range and everything. You know, there's many different ranges, but as long as you yourself become a complete martial artist, that's gonna be it. Now, complete martial artist, Ron has said it before, it is, it is not only because of the kick and punch and the grappling and everything. It is utilizing the mind, spirit, and body together. You have to remember that the All mind, together. body, and spirit is like a three-legged stool. It has to be together and even. If one leg is off, you're going to flip-flop and fall straight on your ass. So, you know, <laughs> you might say, right, and, it's, and it's right. I mean, how many have you sat on a, uh, on a two-legged stool, you know, I mean, you're using your legs to try to balance, but if you have your balance in three-legged stool, that's great. Now, for me, I'd like to add another one. You know, they say, you know, three-legged stool. I say, well, for another one is four-legged stools for me because I, I, I realize one thing, and I'm just going to throw this in, guys. You know, spirit, mind, body, financial stability, okay? Yeah. Because what happens is just that if you don't have financial stability in your life, what happens, it, it distorts your mind. You have nothing. It distorts you. You, you distort your spirit and your, your body. You don't want to work out. You got all loosened up. And all of a sudden, you're not taking care of things. You got to be able to take care of things. And unfortunately, this world right now, you know, we, we kind of depend on the, the monetary value to survive. You know, for some of us, that doesn't matter. We can go out and work in the fields and, you know, shop, uh, go hunting for, for, for animals out there to, uh, for diets or vegetables or fishing and everything. But the thing is, is that you got to be able to secure everything around. Hey, um, <laughs> Ron, I like that poster in the back of you. I mean, that's really a nice one. <laughs> anyway, it kind of makes me compare. All right. We were born without hair. The night we get here, and then we go out with our hair. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, guys, um, you know, Ron, you got so many golden nuggets. I, I just, I just want you to share some with us. What, what, how could you, uh, you know, uh, give us more? You know, Al, what I learned from the martial arts, and I've had some experience in, in various different systems. It, it doesn't really matter what style you study. The only reason that's important is that you study and why you study. I study because I believe I'm a student. I believe that I'm lacking in technology mentally, physically, and spiritually. I still look in the mirror and see a fat old man. Got it? <laughs> and I have a six pack, you understand? But I believe that that is what has guided me to make whatever accomplishments I've made in my life that I've just said, just keep going no matter what. You know, I met Peter Urban, my first sensei, my first real sensei in Goju. And he taught me that defeat the self first to know. So if you can find look in the mirror and take a real look at yourself and see what's good and what's bad. If you can do that honestly, you face yourself. Once you face yourself, you know your fears, you face your fears, and then you progress. The only way to progress 
is to face your fears. You know, I live fearlessly. I believe that everything is possible. Nothing is impossible. Look at what's happened during my lifetime. Space travel, all kinds of stuff. I grew up in 1943 like you, Al. Mm -hmm. I grew up You're in giving away our age. <laughs> you know, cobblestone streets, wooden ice carts, you know what I mean? Ice, ice machine under your refrigerator, you know? Right. And look at now, everybody has a computer in their hand. They have an actual computer in their hand, whether they use it as a computer, it's a phone, it's a this, it's that. But look at how technology has made a difference. So if the same technology is being used in the martial arts, we have a lot to learn. We got, we got a long way to go. And, and I believe in virtual classes. I do. I know there's a need for uh, interpersonal stuff and, and to work against a real body, but I believe there's a real future for virtual training. Where it's else happening. could someone get a chance to meet you and other people like yourself, Al, with, 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 with such an accomplished career in person? It's almost mm -hmm. impossible. Right. I have the opportunity yeah. to turn on my computer now and get the best of everything, the best of the Gracies, the best of Yamaguchi. We're living in amazing, amazing times. Mm -hmm. yeah. We truly are. Oh, I thank you so much for even in, uh, doing that. Um, I know that, here's the thing, you know, I know that when we get off, there are going to be a lot of people asking, damn, I should have asked the questions. Why? Uh, Why? You know, but, well, you have a chance right now to kind of think about it. And even while the time that Ron and I are talking, you guys can begin to start texting any questions you have about life, about and, diet, about workout, about martial arts, yeah. about what made us who we are, you know, because we, well, we have Ron question. and I, and we, we didn't get we didn't get to where we are or live this long because of whatever. I mean, listen, guys, we have it's had a lot of failures journey. in our life. You know, we had uh, we had had a lot of failures in our life, and I always tell you, folks, that don't be afraid to fail because failure is the father. It means you try. That's right. right. It's one you, step you to success. And, and 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 thinking about Ron's failures. You don't know about him. You hear about the success, but he had to go through a lot, a lot of things to get there. You know, I've so been guys, homeless. don't get disappointed. I've lived in the street. You hear me, guys? I've lived I, in I an abandoned that. building for three years. I live in my car for one well, for one whole month. <laughs> Imagine three years in an abandoned building, no running water, no heat, and I had an infant child with me. Wow. That's your oldest son. Yes. Right? And I wound up eventually buying a building from the city hmm. and renting it out for years. Wow. Awesome. The same building awesome. I home. Where was that in New York? In the Lower East Side of New York? York? Yeah. In New York. Wow. That's pretty rough and pretty fast city. So, you know, guys, if you have any questions, start shooting it because there we're is. running on time right now. There is a question. Go ahead. Uh, so, Guys, thank you so much for being here again. Um, you, er, you mentioned earlier, so I kind of have a three-part question, so bear with me. Sure. You earlier that you uh, have a, you know, a limited series coming out, so I also want to extend this to Sifu Al. In your limited series, who would you want to play you? And then my second question is... Michael Jai White. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Good answer. And then the second question that, I, I mean, as a fan, I have to know these next two things. What is your favorite martial arts movie? What is your least favorite martial arts movie? And then the third one, this is the tough one. I might have to exit after this. If you could fight any of the fighters of the modern era, who do you pick and why is it Fedor? All right, you, you know, go. <laughs> let me start backwards, okay? I would love to go back into the octagon and fight Hoist again. Not that my nine years of jujitsu was gonna make any difference. I think I would still lose. But I would just feel so much better going in, being a little more prepared, you know? When, when I fought Hoist in, she was 1996 or 1994. 1994, November 16th. 
Tulsa, Oklahoma. I broke my left ankle one week before the show. Whoa. I was training with this wrestler, Leon Stevenson. He's a, he's a very famous college wrestler. 240 pounds, six foot four, suplex. My ankle hit the frame of the mat and broke my left ankle one week before I went to the octagon. I fought anyway. I had to fight. I could not say, oh no, I can't do it because I broke my ankle a week before the show. I had to do it. Do you understand that I had to? Mm. And I'm so happy that I did. And I've taken a lot of shit from people because Hoist Beach kicked your butt, yada, 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 he choked you out, and all that stuff. But anyone that talks that is full of shit because I was the one in the octagon with Hoist. We That's were right. talking to each other while we were rolling, you know? It just elbowed me in the back of my neck and he says, no, that's not good enough. You know, I mean, we had a good time. For me to last almost five minutes with Royce at that time was truly a miracle. And he hurt me with those elbows in the back of the neck, but I didn't go unconscious from the choke. I was about five seconds from going unconscious. You know, when you see those stars and those little glitters, <laughs> that's where I was. And I tapped, I said, I could hold his, his, you know, forearm for another minute or two, but what difference would it make? Eventually it would lead to the same thing. I couldn't get out of his back control, you know? So I tapped and I'm so happy that I had that opportunity to do it. You know, after I fought him, Corian and Helson and Elio, they said, you have to be the commissioner of the UFC. You're, you're a legend. And so I took the job as the commissioner and I, did, I put together the fights for UFC 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And UFC 11, I, I just said, I had enough and, and I resigned. And it's only because I, as being the commissioner, I had to go to court and represent the UFC. Mm. McCain, remember the Senator McCain? He sure. called me an animal and a pit bull in court when I had to represent the UFC as a commissioner. So it was right after that I said, you know what? It's way too much stress. The money was magnificent, but the stress level was very difficult. And to keep finding new fighters for each new card. And you would think a lot of people were interested in doing it. A lot of people talk that, but they didn't really want to do it. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm mm -hmm. so deadly, I can this and that. Yeah, right, well, come down and uh, we'll see what you got. I had to go to places like uh, Huntington Beach to find Tank Abbott and guys like that. I created the, the super fight. You know that? I created the super fight. That's awesome. So, who else would I like to fight? Oh, oh, the best movie, Mad Monkey Kung Fu. <laughs> that, that's my favorite of all time Kung Fu movies. And the worst one, holy cow, I have to think back now. I, I couldn't think of any worse ones because even the worst one was often something, something, something good to watch. Yes, yes, yes. So, I, yeah, I really don't have an answer for the worst one. Um, you know, I was a Kung Fu movie fan for many years until I went to Hong Kong and I started making them. And that's when I realized that it was all fake. It was all artificial. The bricks were plastic. They had wires for you. You know, the guy, stunt guy stepped in. You know, it was just... Uh, and when you see it in real life, without the sound effects and without the music and without the, the great uh, cinematic qualities that are added from angularization and things like that, it, it changes your concept. I, I grew to not like them because I felt that they were total fantasy. I mean, they were great as an inspiration when uh, you don't know anything, but I know people that think that those people can do those things. <laughs> I mean, really, I know people, yep. especially during those days, that said, oh, yeah, when you can kill 50 guys. Right. Yeah. 
and it was one more question. I'm sorry. I know uh, I'm missing. You know, I think you kind of covered it all. Mm -hmm. I think got the best, worst, uh, who would play you in fighter. But now I have another question is, when sure. do we call Scott Coker and Bellator and make Hoist Gracie, Ron Van Cleef 2 happen? How do we do uh, this? How do we do this? Do it, please. <laughs> I would do that in a heartbeat, guys. I would do that in a heartbeat. Maybe we'll have to awesome. post it on YouTube for the challenge. Oh, in a heartbeat, I would do that. Thank you so much, Mr. Van Cleef. I really appreciate it. I'm a huge fan. This is my pleasure, guys. Craziest and thing. You know, any any of you guys can reach out to me at ronvancleef at yahoo.com, my email. You know, really simple. Very easy. There you yeah. go, guys. AJ, That's great. you got a question. Unmute. Yeah. Yeah, real quick, I'll make a quick two-part question, uh, kind of about your career in Hong Kong cinema, because like Tiger, I was a huge fan growing up. And so you were a pioneer in the sense of a foreign performer headlining. Hong you know, Kong I was the movies. first foreigner to headline Hong Kong yeah. movies. Precisely. Way before, like in the 80s, when, you know, say Cynthia Rothrock or other people yeah, were. Unbelievable. Yeah. So um, you, you were a good decade before everyone else. So my two part question, the first part is in the 80s, were you ever invited back during what's called like the golden era of Hong Kong cinema, Hong Kong New Wave? Oh, like, yes. Like, I went to Korea. I went to the Philippines. I went to Thailand. I did films during that period also. Oh, did were you ever invited back for like say a Golden Harvest or a Shaw Brothers one in that period? Oh, yeah, I've done I've done several of those. Ah, um, when I lived in Hong Kong, I worked doing voiceovers for Shaw Brothers and Golden Harvest. <laughs> I did voiceover the, the the English for a hundred films. Oh wow! Oh yeah, yeah. That's and what I did in between the movies because you know sometimes. It's, some a big break between the movies. I did that for years, for years. Very cool. Oh. And that was a wonderful experience. You know, I, I got a chance to work with uh, this, this, this Sifu, Sifu Yang. I, I, we did some work with um, the RZA. Oh. The Wu -Tang Clan. Nice. I, I did a video with Capadonna, in which I choreographed the martial arts. And it's a really quite an interesting uh, music video. It's called uh, slang editorial. You can get it on YouTube. It's really nice. You see some really nice martial arts. And uh, the Riz is the, the real deal, guys. He can really do his stuff. Yeah. You know, most uh, people think it's a gimmick. No, yeah. he, he really has studied with, with a, um, a generational Shaolin master. That's right. Uh, yeah. my, my second part yeah, would be so you worked with some fantastic co-stars, uh, Jason Pai Piao, Carter Wong, Dragon Lee. Carter, my buddy. Yeah. Oh. So I, did, I, I was going to ask, who is your favorite of all those Hong Kong martial artists that you worked with? But would it be Carter? Carter. Yeah. Carter's my favorite. Uh, I, I, did, I did four films with Carter. Great guy, fun guy. We'd run up to the ladies. We'd do all kinds of stuff. But he was, <laughs> he, he was a real... He was a real technician. He really was specific in what he wanted from his um, his shots and his choreography. Beautiful guy. I mean, we we were like brothers. We were very, very close, very close. I remember when he moved to New York, he opened a dojo in Chinatown and I used to go down and see him all the time. Yeah, great guy. And I spoke to him a few months ago. Oh. He really looks good. Yeah. He looks really good. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Master Ron. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right. Well, that's terrific, guys. I see nobody else has any questions. Um, we're getting close to the end of this session, unless you flew well. I, I, I've got another? about 10 minutes before I have to take my son to uh, tutoring. Yeah. Well, that's basically why I'm going to be closing this off right away so that this way you'll have time. Unless Sorry about that. Else. And and if you, you do have any questions after this, because you know how most of us get questions after we get yeah, off. Any, anytime, guys. There you Run go. Keep at yahoo.com. I'm on you Facebook. Go. You've got your personal invitation to actually email them. So Please. this way you can get the answer straight from the man. All right, guys. So again, we and, and really thank you so much. Really, thank you so much, guys. Well, well thank you. from the bottom of my heart, man. Thank you.
You know, yeah. you're a brother more than a brother. See you so, soon, man. All right. And we got to start anyway. working on your documentary. You yes, yes, yes. We're going to be doing documentary. it. Come on, man. <laughs> well, we're doing right. that. We're getting, we're getting the first part gone. You right. know, and, I love uh, you, brother. We, we, all right. All right. Bobby, uh, I guess. Notorious. I guess that's it for now. AJ, okay. Sonny. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. So, again, thank okay. you, everybody. Thank uh, you. Thanks, salute. Bless. And really God bless you guys. Take care. All Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.